us help tonight. Send us help tonight, Father. Father, send us help tonight. Send us help tonight, Father. Father, send us help tonight. Send us help tonight. In the name of Jesus, send us help tonight. Send us help tonight. Father, send us help tonight. Send us help tonight. Send us help tonight. Send us help tonight. Oh my God. Father, send us help tonight. Send us help tonight. Let there be help tonight. Let there be help tonight. In the name of Jesus, Father, send us help. Send us help. Send help my way. Send help my way. Send help my way, Father. Father, send us help. Father, send us help. Send us help. Send us help tonight. Father, send us help tonight. Send us help tonight. Send us help tonight. Send us help tonight. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Send us help tonight. Father, send us help. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my Father, my Father, my Father, send us help tonight. Father, send us help tonight. In the name of Jesus. Father, send us help tonight. Send us help tonight. Let there be help. Let there be help. Let there be help. Let help come our way. Let help locate us, God, in the name of Jesus. Give us how to pray. Give us how to seek your face. In the name of Jesus, give us help tonight. Father, give us help tonight. Give us help tonight. Give us help tonight. Give us help tonight. Give us how to pray. Give us a wake-up call. In the name of Jesus, give us a wake-up call. Father, give us a wake-up call. Father, give us a wake-up call. Give us a wake-up call. Give us a wake-up call. Give us a wake-up call tonight. In the name of Jesus, give us a divine wake-up call tonight. Father, give us a wake-up call. In the name of Jesus, let there be a divine wake-up call. Give us a wake-up call. In the name of Jesus, Father, give us help tonight. Give us help tonight. Give us help tonight. Father, let there be help tonight. Give us help. Give us help. Give us help, Father. In the name of Jesus, give us help while we are praying. Give us how to pray. Give us how to intercede. Give us how to break down stubble, uh, 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 stubborn walls. Give us how to break down stubborn walls, God. In the name of Jesus, give us how to pray. Give us how to pray. Give us how to pray. Give us how to pray tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, give us how to pray. Give us how to pray. Give us how to intercede. Give us how to intercede. Give us how to pray cause our prayer to become meaningful in the name of Jesus. Cause us how to pray meaningful prayers. Cause us how to be pray, how to pray meaningful prayers, Father, in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Cause us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray meaningful prayers. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, teach us how to pray meaningful prayers tonight. Teach us how to seek your face tonight. Teach us how, O oh God, to come before you holy, without spot, without blemish, without a wrinkle, without any such thing. In the name of Jesus, look on us tonight. Look on us tonight as we're praying. Look on us tonight, Father. Look on us tonight. We're, look on us tonight. Look on us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Father, we're seeking your plan. We seek your plan for our life. We seek your way for our life, God. In the name of Jesus, we seek your way. We seek you tonight. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, excellent God. Have mercy upon us. 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 Have mercy on us, O oh God. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O oh God, have mercy upon us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Excellent God, look on us. Excellent God, help us tonight. Help us tonight. Help us tonight. Help us tonight. Oh, help us tonight. Excellent God, help us tonight. In the name of Jesus. We come before you as empty pitchers. We come before you, Father, in desperation. Mm, 
Glory to God. Have mercy upon us. 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 The mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, look on us tonight. 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 Father, look on us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Look on us tonight, God. We do not come alone. We do not stand alone. We do not pray alone. We do not pray alone. We do not stand here alone. In the name of Jesus. Your name is a strong tower. The righteous run into you and are saved. Have mercy upon us tonight. Have mercy upon us tonight. Have mercy upon us tonight, excellent God. Have mercy upon us tonight. In the name of Jesus, have mercy upon us tonight. 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 Father, have mercy upon us tonight. Father, have mercy upon us tonight. Have mercy upon us as we seek your face. Have mercy upon us as we come before you. Have mercy upon us. Forgive us of all sins. Blot out our transgressions, creating us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Forgive us of all sins. Forgive us of all evil. Forgive us of evil attitudes, ungodly attitudes, unfiltered conversations. Forgive us tonight. Forgive us, God. Forgive us. Forgive us for evil jesting. Forgive us for evil humors. Forgive us for ungodly humors. Forgive us, God. Forgive us for warming by the enemy's fire. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us as we are praying tonight. Forgive us as we're seeking your face. Forgive us tonight. Lead us in a clean path. Lead us in a righteous path. Lead us in a holy path. Lead us in a path of holiness. Lead us in a path of purity. Lead us in a path, oh God, that is righteous. In the name of Jesus, we need your help tonight. We need you. We need you. We need you. In the name of the Lord, we need you, Father. We need you. Tonight, we invoke your presence. Tonight, we invoke your presence. Tonight, we invoke your presence. In the name of Jesus. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to a time of praying. Welcome to a time of intercession. Welcome as we come tonight to pray. Kyle, it's good seeing you. Happy to have you with us again tonight. All of you, the Lord's children who are with us tonight, God bless us to you. God keep you heavy and smile upon you. And we are coming tonight to pray. We are coming to seek the face of the Lord. We pray that you would come and join in with us. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Tonight, obedience is teaching me to utterly defeat my enemies. Exodus 23, 20 through 33. And not vexed enough. Not vexed enough. Not vexed enough. What do you mean not vexed enough? 2 Peter 2, 6-9, not vexed enough. Hallelujah. Exodus 23, 20-33, not vexed enough. Hallelujah. We're going to read the scriptures tonight. We're going to put it out there so you'll see where we're coming from. And that you can find your prayer posture. You can find that place, a place in the word of God. And as you begin to find your place in the word of God, not your place in your house, not your place in your room, not your place on the floor, but find your place in the word of God. And as you find that place, that closet of the word of God, let your eyes, let your spirit hone in on that area that you really need God most. And then when you pray, yeah, pray for yourself. Of course, pray for yourself, but also pray for others. Pray that God would deliver us 
that God will deliver us from evil, that God would bring us out of darkness, that God would bring us into his marvelous light, that God would give us victory over sin and shame, that God will raise us up in the mighty name of Jesus. So pray for one another, pray for, uh, amen, your brothers and sisters, amen. Let's pray tonight, amen. And as we look at our prayer, we don't have a specific prayer point, but the scriptures is our prayer point. So find yourself in the word of the Lord. Obedience is teaching me to utterly defeat my enemies. Obedience is teaching me to utterly defeat my enemies. Hallelujah. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. Exodus 23, 20 through 33. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. We break up fellow ground tonight. We break down stubborn wills tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We break down stubborn wills tonight. Exodus 23, 20 through 33. And 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 6 through 9. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee unto the place which I have prepared. To bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him. Obey his voice. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemy and an adversary unto thy adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, the Canaanites, Havites, Jebusites and I will cut them off and I added in the scripture uh huh uh, the Amalekites who are not listed here but are definitely an enemy and man if you don't defeat that enemy it will defeat you verse 24 thou shalt not bow down to their gods thou shalt not bow down to their gods Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quick break down their images. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from thee. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee I will remove sickness I will take sickness away from the midst of thee there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in your land the number of your days I will fulfill I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Havites, Canaanites, Hittites from before thee. Those enemies that you cannot handle, I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to drive them out before thee. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate, the beast of the field multiply against thee, or you get to a place that you feel you got it made and you can relax. No, we're not doing that. But little by little, I will drive them out from before thee till thou be increased and inherit, and inherit the land. And I will set my bounds from the Red Sea, even unto the Sea of the Philistines, from the desert to the river. 
For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land unto your hands. I will deliver the inhabitants, hallelujah, of the land unto your hands, and you shall drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt make no covenants with them, nor with their gods. Thou shalt not dwell, they shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, I will surely be a snare unto thee. You say, well, how are we going to pray? How are we going to pray, man to God? How are we going to pray? How are we going to pray? We're going to pray in the spirit. We're going to allow God to lead us and guide us. There's a difference between praying in the spirit and praying in tongues. I'll say that again. There's a difference between praying in the spirit and praying in tongues. You may not have known that, but yes, there's a difference between praying in the spirit and praying in tongues. God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can worship God in spirit and not have to utilize the gift of tongues. Just in case you didn't know. Now you know. In the name of Jesus. God bless you to you woman of God. Happy to see you with us. Amen. Now let us go to our next portion of reading. The first portion of reading, our title, Obedience is Teaching Me to Utterly Defeat My Enemies. A subtopic, not vexed enough. Not vexed enough. Not vexed enough. Vexed. Subjected to and reacting with irritation. Annoyed, irritated, exasperated, bothered, upset, angry, displaced, aggravated, furiated, irked, frustrated, peeved, irritable, troubled, angry, disturbed, galled, outraged, mad, indignant, and the list goes on. What are we talking about? We're talking about 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 6 and 9, 6 through 9 rather. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodliness. Making them an example unto those that after should live in ungodliness or shall live an ungodly life. After they have seen what have happened, don't think for once that they're going to get by. And, and I'm saying they, for anybody who have seen and heard and read what have happened to Sodom and Gomorrah, don't think that they're going to get by. And deliver just a lot. Hear this. And deliver just a lot. Vexed with the filthy conversations of the wicked. Delivered just a lot, not just him only, but that he is being a just man. Delivered this just person. Delivered just a lot. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Notice what they were doing to him. Notice the reaction. Notice the response. Vexed with the filthy conversations. Vexed with the filthy conversations. Vexed with the filthy conversations of the wicked. From that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing. Lot is seeing this 
and Lot is hearing this, what type of reaction, what type of response is Lot giving? And seeing and hearing, he's not conforming. And seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. He's in the midst of this city and he heard their ungodly conversations. He heard their ungodly conversation from day to day. He's seeing their actions. He's hearing their deeds. He's vexed. He's not conforming. It's aggravating him. Said the Lord knoweth how to deliver the ungodly. Um, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. And seeing, hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with the unlawful deeds. Not vexed enough. Annoyed. In other words, sin must annoy us. We've got to come to a place and our prayer point, one of our prayer points, Father, I don't know how you're going to word it, but Father, make me annoyed with sin, irritated with sin, irate with sin, bothered because of sin, exasperated because of sin, upset, angry, displeased, aggravated, furiated, irate, frustrated, that's right, irritable. Don't let me rest. Don't let me get comfortable. Don't let me get comfortable by, while our daughters are being raped. Don't let me get comfortable while our sons being victimized and sodomized. Don't let me rest while babies are being boarded. Don't let me rest while there's murdering going on. Don't let me rest while the enemy want to traffic among us. Don't let me rest while sickness is on the uprise and we live among sickness as if it's the norm of the day. It is not the norm of the day. Sickness is not the norm. No, 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 no. Cancer is not the norm. No, mm -mm. no, it's not the norm. It's not the norm. Cancer is not the norm. Tumors is not the norm. Having a stroke is not the norm. No, these things are not the norm. No, high blood pressure is not the norm. Sugar diabetes is not the norm. Strokes and you name it, it's not the norm. We can no longer live as if it's the norm. Not until we get vexed. Not until we are angry. Not until we become hostile toward it. Father, help me. Don't let me rest in the midst of filth. Don't let me rest. Don't let me get comfortable in the midst of filth. Picture you living in Sodom and Gomorrah. You're shopping in the midst of wickedness. You're laying comfortable in the midst of evil, your doors are not locked in the midst of evil and wickedness and ungodliness and filth. It doesn't bother us. We're watching TV and laughing in the midst of filth. People are being robbed and killed and, st and they're stealing one another, trafficking our sons and daughters. They're coming up missing not bothering us we're not vexed how long how long how long oh God how long how long do we go on how long do we not see how long do you not see and if thou God are waiting on us if thou God are waiting on us put a vexation in our spirit cause us these things to angry us. We've got to become hostile towards sin. And, oh God, and no longer can we digest it. We cannot digest sin. We cannot digest it. 
cannot get comfortable around it, cannot desire it for our own, cannot look for an avenue of wickedness, cannot look for the pleasures of sin to happen our way, cannot make appointment with evil, cannot make appointment with death, cannot make an appointment with filth and ungodliness, cannot make, cannot make appointments to lay down with demons and devils. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Father, help us today. Father, help us today. 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 Help us. We are praying. Help us now, Father. Help us. Help us tonight. And I just need you to pray as you know how to pray. I just need you to cry out to God as you know how to cry out to God. Obedience is teaching me to utterly defeat my enemies. And how am I going to defeat my enemies? I've got to get frustrated, first of all. I cannot become laxed around sin. I cannot lay my head on sin and fall to sleep and wake up and think I'm just going to walk into blessings. Why is the blessings not coming my way? I've become too comfortable with sin. Sin doesn't bother me anymore. Sin doesn't bother us anymore. Sin doesn't bother us. It doesn't stink in our nostrils anymore. Father, help us. Help us, God. Help us. You said, Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee in the place where I have prepared. But Father, I pray that you would help us today. Help us today. For some reason, Father, in our culture, in our traditions, Oh, Father, for some, for some reason or another, in our learning, in our upbringing, we've been made to feel it's okay. These are just normal reactions. In our life we live in, Father, we've come up to the place to feel. Oh, they'll just be okay. They, they, that's just them. That's just them. Let them do what they do. And we're not vexed. We're not vexed. Father, help us today. 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 Help us to become angry with sin. Angry, infuriated, frustrated with the degradation that is happening around us, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life. Father, that's happening around us. Somebody's baby is being offered on, on the altar of sin. Somebody's son, God. Somebody's son is being violated on the altar of sin. Somebody's son is being offered on the, on the altar of fornication, adultery, lesbianism, homosexuality. Father, somebody's child. Somebody's child is being violated. We're resting. We're sleeping as the disciples on the threshold, on the threshold of evil, on the threshold when demons are centered around Jesus to conquer, to defeat, to kill, to destroy, to take him in. We're sleeping. You say, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, but we're sleeping. We're tired. Little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arms to sleep. Father, help us tonight. 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 We want the curse moved, but we're enjoying where we are. Father, help us tonight. We don't even know that we're living a life that is cursed. We're not yet the head. We will go through life and acting as though it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It wasn't supposed to happen. And when we act as though it wasn't supposed to happen, Father, we're calling your word a lie. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay if I have to struggle a little bit. That's okay. Maybe it wasn't supposed to happen this way, that I was supposed to do a little struggling. 
and let the rich get rich and the poor get poor, but it's okay. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. The devil is a liar. It's not what you said, Father. It's not what the words say. It's not what the words say. And your word is our textbook. It's your word is our guidepost. Your word, your word shall lead us. Your word shall guide us. We are guided by your word. We are strengthened by your word. We grow because of your word. We understand because of your word, Father, and have mercy upon us. When these things doesn't happen, we violate your laws. When these things are not happening for us, Father, we are went the other way. Life and chance happens to all men. Favor, grace, opportunities, chance happens to all men. You give all men an opportunity. You give all men. You give every living person an opportunity to make a difference, to make a change. Do something different. To break out of the box. Think outside the box. Do something a little different. Father, help us tonight. Help us tonight. Help us not to conform to sin. Not to conform to this world. Not to conform to the things around us. Not to conform to evil. Father, have mercy upon us. Roll back the scales from our eyes. Call us to see. Call us to know. Call us to understand. In the name of Jesus. That this is not the norm. This is not what's supposed to happen. Your word is true. Your word is truth for us. Your word is the example that we walk by. Your word is the example, Father. And from tonight forward, Father, have mercy upon us. Jesus has become our perfect example. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah become an example to us that we are not to engage in that form of wickedness. We are not to engage in that type of sin. And just as it happened to Sodom and Gomorrah, it would happen to us. It would happen to us. Just a matter of time, it would happen to us. It's an example. It's an example and you cannot lie. It's an example to every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that goes that way. It is your word. Heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or tittle of your word pass. Father, it is your word. And it is an example to us that if we conform to these things, these things will happen to us just as it happened then. In the name of Jesus, whether we are collectively in a group, in a nation set on fire, or individually, are we, as we depart this life, as we depart this life and have indulged in sin and have offered up sacrifices on the altar of sin and have bowed to the altar of sin, and have bowed to the altar of fornication and adultery and have bowed to the altars of evil and have bowed to the altar of unrighteousness. Father, we're no better. Help us tonight. Help us tonight. Forgive us tonight. We stand tonight, Father. We stand tonight in the name of Jesus. We're saying forgive us. We have stared sin in the face and we have not been vexed. Father, it have touched our families, it have touched our sons and our daughters. We have not been vexed. We have watched it on television and laughed at it. We have not been vexed. We have slept with them, we have eaten with them, we have toyed with them, laughed at their jokes and played with them. We have not been vexed. Tonight, Father, we pray. We pray. We pray. For every listening ear. For every person that would take the time to say, Father, help mercy upon me. 
every person who have witnessed sin and have not been vexed, have witnessed evil and have not been vexed, sin have creeped into our home and have not vexed us. We've been dodged. We've engaged. We've made appointment with sin and it has not vexed us. We lay down with dogs thinking that we arise without fleas. It has not vexed us. Father, help us tonight. Help us tonight. We want to be healed. We want the miracles. We want the deliverance. We want the blessings of Almighty God. We want to be the head and not the tail. We want to be the lenders and not the borrowers. But we really have not given up. We really have not thrown in the... We, we have not given up. We have not thrown anything at sin. We have, we have not gotten aggravated. We have not got frustrated. We have not been vexed. We have not been vexed. We have not been vexed, Father. Tonight, change that. Let that be a change in our life. From this day forward, Father, create in us a clean heart. From this day forward, Father, create in us a clean mind, a different outlook. And Father, put a resistance in us. You say, resist the devil. Resist the devil. And he will flee. But we can't just put the devil out and not put his stuff out. But we have to put his stuff out, his deeds out, his likings, those things we become comfortable with. We put the devil and his deeds and his likings and all those things we've come accustomed to, Father, we put it all out. We put it all out. So tonight, help us. Tonight we make confessions to you. We're saying, cleanse us, oh God. Cleanse us. If we are to walk as Jesus walked, if we are to have the power that Jesus had, if we are to be, if we are to be filled with the Holy Ghost and to do the thing that you've called us to do, we've got to turn aside. Help us to turn aside from the filth of sin. Cause it to vex us. Cause it to vex us. Cause it to aggravate us. To perturb us. Agitate. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we really need you. We really need your help tonight. You made these an examples. You made this an example to us. You, you, oh God. And the angels that sin, the angels, the angels that sin, you bound them in chains. You bound them in chains, Father. <clears throat> and are we to think that we're to get by? Are we to think that thou, God, will continue to have mercy on us? When your word have come and stood us face to face, looked at us in our eyes, and we continue living as we've been living and doing as we've been doing, change us, oh God. Change us tonight. Change us tonight. Father, tonight we confess. We cast off the works of darkness. We cast off the evil in the name of Jesus. And tonight we intercede. Tonight, if we know that we are not guilty of these things, we pray for one another. But how can we pray for one another when we have not looked deep within the crevice of our own selves and say, Father, have mercy upon me. I've allowed sin in my home. I've allowed sin in my comfort zone. It have not frustrated me. It have not angered me. 
I've laid down with evil. I've been taught not to put sin out like that. Because that sin might be my loved one. That sin might be that one that I've become real close to, a friend, a partner, a lover. That friend might be that person that I have feelings for. That sin might be a habit of smoking and drinking. Having a little concubine on the side. A male concubine, female concubine. We need your help, Father. We need your help. And we have to be what you called us to be. We cannot, will not go on at the way we've been going. Father, tonight, I stand as a servant of the Most High, as your son, and I'm saying, Father, hear us tonight. I say, Father, hear us tonight. Hear our prayers. We repent before thee. Father, we, re we repent before thee openly in the name of Jesus and to every person that are with us tonight. Maybe you are not in this place, and that's fine if you're not. But maybe intercede for somebody, maybe a neighbor, maybe a friend, maybe somebody, maybe a co-worker that not so privy as you. Intercede on their behalf. As Abram began to cry out to God, Father, will you, will you still destroy them if you find 40? If you find 40, oh, please don't do this thing. Please don't destroy them. Will you destroy this city if you found 40 righteous? I will not. Pre-adventure, there might be 35. I will not. 30? Let me say again, come on. How about for 25? No. 20? Intercede. Help us to intercede, Father. Teach us the grace of intercession. Teach us, teach us the grace of intercession. Teach us, yes, the grace of intercession. The spirit of intercession. In the name of Jesus, that thou, God, will help us tonight. That we cannot make the prayer all about us. But we have a fellow man, fellow sister, brother, who really needs you. Their eyes are blind. They're blind to the truth. You said that this gospel be hid. It is hid to those that are lost. Father, tonight, we intercede for them. And tonight we say, Father, forgive us. Forgive us. We've gotten too laxed. And we admit, Father, we have gotten too laxed. We permit, we, we, we admit that we have fell asleep on the job, gotten a little too comfortable in this present evil world. Yes, you, you, you told us that we, are, that we are strangers here. This is not our home. We're passing through, but we've got comfortable here. We've got comfortable in Egypt. We've got comfortable in Babylon. We're bowed to Baal. We have bowed to the image. We have bowed to sin. We have bowed to fornication and adultery. We have bowed. We have bowed to ungodliness. We have bowed. But we are better than this, Father. We are better than the wickedness we exude. We are better than this. Father, help us tonight. Turn your face toward us again. Turn your favor toward us again. Have mercy upon us again. Let your word come to us again. Anoint us again for service. 
Use us again. Use us again. Whereas we were tickled by the Hammond organ. We were tickled. We were, we, we were moved because of a deep place in our soul was touched. But our spirit man was not changed. Father, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. We become too emotional with the wrong thing. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, Father. Please have mercy upon us. Father, forgive us of all sins. Blot out our transgressions. Create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Teach us to know you. Teach us to love you. Teach us to chase after you. Teach us to love what you love and hate what you hate. Love what you love and hate what you hate. Love what you love and hate what you hate. Teach us to do so. We're not haters of society. We're not haters of people. We're haters of that spirit of evil. We're haters of that altar of sin. We are haters of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. We're haters of the, 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 the wickedness, the, the deeds of evil. We pray that all men would come to truth. That all men would come to know you. Have mercy upon us tonight. Father, we cast off the works of evil. We cast off the works of darkness. Sanctify us holy. Purify us holy. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you tonight. We thank you tonight, God. We thank you tonight, excellent God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to go to the word of God and I just want to read something. Yes, I want to read something from the word of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In verse number nine of that second Peter, of that second Peter chapter two, second Peter chapter two, verse nine, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of digni dignity. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, being not railing, uh, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken, made to be taken and destroyed. They're made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not to utterly perish in their own corruption. You've got to hear verse 12, just in case if you don't understand verse 12. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken, do what? Made to be taken, and made to be destroyed. Speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytimes. Yeah, to riot in the day, in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes 
sporting themselves with their own deceiving while they feast with you. While they feast with you. There are things around you. There are There are things. There are things. There are things around you. You see them as friends. You see them as friends. You see them as people. Father, open their eyes. Open their eyes to this word. Open their eyes. You see them as people. You see them as friends. No, baby, but they were made to be taken. They were made to be destroyed. Those persons around you that you call people, those persons around you that you call friends, those per persons that are around you you call besties, those persons that you've been influenced by their friendship and their fellowship, Yeah, those persons. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation, preserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished. God know how to send warning. God know how to send clarity of his word. God know how to shine a spotlight on us and no thing we've become real close to. Now it's up to us to either believe it or continue the way we've been going. But if we want God to do something profound in our life, change us. If we want God to use us for his glory, use us. If we, if we want God to use us as he used doctors, we want God to use us as he used mighty men. We, we want God to use us as he used Jesus. I did say doctors. <laughs> I did. But if we want God to use us in any way, any shape, any form, any fashion. It's going to require us doing something a little bit different than what we've been doing. And doing it his way. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken, made to be taken and destroyed, speaks evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count a pleasure, they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. While they enjoy your time, while they enjoy your friendship, while they enjoy having a relationship with you, while they enjoy what you enjoy. But all the while, they were made to be destroyed. They were made to be taken. You just didn't know that. The word will speak for itself. This is not being made up. Having eyes full of adultery. Having eyes full of adultery. And that cannot cease from sin. They cannot cease from sin. Having eyes full of adultery. Those same one that was made to be broken. I mean those same one that was made to be taken. Those same one that was made to be destroyed. They cannot be saved. They cannot enjoy eternal life. They were not made to have that. But they look like you. They act like you. They look like men. They look like women. They dress like you dress. They act like you dress. Um, they act like you. They conduct themselves like you. They go to church. They go to our churches. They sit in the pews, some in the pulpit, some of them preachers, and they're laughing all the way, all the while, and they poke fun. And shall receive, 
and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure. They count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Sports they are, uh, spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceiving while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin beguiling unstable souls, beguiling unstable souls. They are beguiling unstable souls and hearts and hearts they have exercised with covetous practice, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bezor, Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked by his iniquity. The dumbass speaking with man's voice, the, 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 the animal, that, 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 that donkey, that mule, that ass, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. These are walls without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who lived in error and the rest, and the rest, and the rest. Read it. Second Peter chapter 2. Just, just take some time to read it. My time is almost up. But people of God, if I may say this with you, say this to you before we say goodnight to each other. We can no longer allow sin to no longer vex us. We can no longer just sit among it and it doesn't irritate us. If we're going to be the children God wants us to be, if we're going to do the thing that Jesus did, there's some thing that just got to aggravate us. Just like when Jesus went to the temple and saw what they were doing in the temple, it aggravated him. And he drove them out. He scourged them. He, he drove them out. Why? It vexed him. It vexed his righteous soul. It vexed him when he saw them doing what they were doing in the temple. Because that was not the purpose of your sacrifices. You did not come and buy your sacrifices there and then exchange it. No, you... It, it, it was more... It meant more to God when it came from your place, your raising, something that was close to you. But in this case, no, it didn't cost you nothing. Just get to the temple and buy what you need and just give it. And they were doing it inside the temple. That vexed Jesus. We need to learn a lesson that we cannot allow sin to sit around us, lay around us. We lay on it. We sleep with it and it not vex us. We've got to come, we got to come vexed. If you really want to see the hand of God, become vexed. Uh, one of the things that's been on my mind, let me say this again. Lot, uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah has been Sodom and Gomorrah for many years. I don't know how long, but for a long time. It has been that way. And Lot was with Abram. All he knew was what Abram did, and he witnessed how God blessed Abram. But the, the land became too small for them. They had to go a different way. And, and the man of God, Lot, he looked, and, and, and Abraham says, Abram says, you know, you choose which way you want to go. We've often uh, lamb blast. We've often lamb blast Lot because he chose that great, lush land. 
but I believe he chose it for a reason. I believe that he needed to go where he went. He needed to go that direction. God know how to call you to, he, he, God know how to set you up. And I believe it was a setup from God that he went that way. He went that way. He went into place where Sodom and Gomorrah, the land was beautiful and luscious, but the, 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 the city was filled with degradation. And it had been that way for a long time, but Lot needed to go there. And when he got to the place, he and his family, looking for a place that they can dwell, looking for a place that they can set, looking for a place that they can rest. Now in the filth. And he's listened to this evil every day. He listened to the wickedness every day. Day and night, he's listening. He's seeing. He see what men do to men. He's seeing what women do to women. He's hearing them. He's hearing them taunt him. He's hearing them trying to come on to him. He's hearing them. He's being pressed. Yeah, he's being harassed. He's being harassed. And it makes him grumpy, irritated, disturbed, angry. Yeah. He was very much disapproving of this. And these are the things we must become very disapproving. Disapproving of the sin that goes on around us. Not comfortable with it, but disapproving of it. No, no, no. This, this, this cannot happen. We've got to become crossed. We've got to become tired. We've got to become, uh, 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 yes, irate, disturbed, angry, outraged, mad, indignant, provoked vexed enough to pray to cry out Father help us Father help us until we cry Sodom and Gomorrah will still exist until we cry until we cry Sodom and Gomorrah will continually continue to do what they've always been doing but this righteous man, this one righteous man set in the city gate, sat there, and while he sat there, it vexed his righteous soul. It vexed him. It aggravated him. It made him frustrated. And that vexation went up to God. That vexation reached heaven. I know you've probably heard me say this again before, but that vexation went to heaven and God dispatched angels to go down and see about him. That vexation right there is what's going to get our turnaround. That type of vexation that's going to gain a heaven response. And we learn from those things. That type of vexation, seeing it but not being a part of it. Seeing it, but yet speaking out against it. Seeing it, being irritated by it. Seeing it and hearing it, and yet it, it, it turns our inside. Oh God, when will you? When will you help us? Frustrated, angry. This can't go on anymore. Then God responds by sending witnesses. God responds by sending watches. The Bible said when his people cry, God hears. And it goes back to the word that the Lord spake. Whatever you allow in the heavens, I mean, whatever you allow on the earth, I'm going to allow it in the heavens. Whatever you rebuke on the earth, whatever you disapprove of in the earth, I'm going to disapprove it in the heavens. Yeah. Whatever perturb you in the earth is going to perturb me in the heavens. Whatever make you grumpy in the earth is going to make me grumpy in the heavens. I, I know you don't see, you don't want to see God as a, a the grumpy God, but you got to look at it. Whatever bother you in the earth is going to bother me in the heavens. But do I have somebody that reflect that? Does this aggravate you? 
in the earth. If it does, it's going to aggravate me in heaven. If you're going to allow it in the earth now, there's no need for me to come see about you. There's something we'll just look at it. Okay. We'll look at sickness. We'll look at sin. We'll look at whatever. And we'll tolerate it. As long as you tolerate it, God's going to tolerate it. But when you become vexed with it, God become vexed with it. Will you become vexed tonight? Will you become vexed? Just in case if you don't know, this is a little treasured thing. This is a little nugget that most people don't know. But when you are bothered, it bothers God. Let sin bother you. Let those things that are happening that you don't approve of, let it bother you. And when it bother you enough, it's going to bother God. When you see sickness trying to overtake somebody, does it bother you? Or are you just there to live, just render a priestly prayer? Whatever your will is, what is your will? Okay, that's your will. Yeah, Father, let it be so. Whatever your will is concerning this person, let it be so. Are you not vexed? Are you not vexed with what is happening? Are you not vexed with what is going on? Let that vexation turn things around for you. My time is up. Father, I thank you tonight for all that you've done and all that you're yet to do. I pray now that that would give us insight, but not only insight, Give us to know what to do. Give us to know how to repent. Give us to know how to pray. Give us to know how to have a clean heart after this. Give us to know what to do and what to ask you for. Father created me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Teach me your will. Teach me your way. In Jesus mighty name. Father calls us to hunger and long for the gift of discerning of spirits. And I really believe it is the gift of discerning of spirits that unravels certain things for us. Things that have been hidden from us for so long. But the gift of discerning of spirits allow us to tap in and know and see what the enemy is trying to hide from us. What the enemy is trying to do against us. What the enemy, how he's trying to come against us how he's trying to plague us, how he's trying to put sickness on us, disease among us, and how he, he want us bound. But now with the gift of discerning of spirit, we can see his deeds. We can see what he's doing. We can see his mischiefs. We can see his plan. We can see his strategies. And now that we see them, we call them out. We call it out in the name of Jesus. We call it out because we know that now that we know what it is, we called it out. Now you will help us and you can help us now because we've been vexed now to cry out against this thing now. Doubt God will help us. Doubt God will help us. We speak life to those who have almost threw in the towel. But Father, we speak a curse over every activity of darkness that's been fighting against them. In the name of Jesus. Father, let the Papa take a under. Shakala, overtake it. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the fire of God descend upon that evilness, that wickedness, in the name of Jesus. Loose your devil. Loose your devil. Loose your devil. In the name of Jesus. Father, turn it around even now. In Jesus' mighty name. We give you praise, Father. We bless you. We glorify you. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. Amen. Listen, our time has come. We've got to go. Amen. But I want you to know that we love you. We'll be back tomorrow. Amen. Same time. 
And also, we'll be back at 5.30 in the p.m. Amen. And also, follow us. Follow us. For those of you who don't know how to reach us, follow us. by. Uh, feel free to listen in by uh, audio by calling in at 508-924-1482 at uh, 9 o'clock in the a.m., Monday through Friday. We have a Bible discussion, Bible study right here on this um uh, well, it's not on the video. We're not doing the video Bible study, but we're having Bible study every single day. It's a conference call Bible study. And if you have a chance to tune in, 508-928-1482. 508-924-1482. Don't cost you nothing. And if it do, we'll just we'll take care of that. We'll make another platform, whatever we need to do to make this right, we'll do that. Uh, but a man, just call in 508-924-508-924-1482. -928 call that number. Tune in with us Monday through Fridays and most Saturdays, but a man, Saturdays, a man, we're here. Monday through Saturdays, Monday through Saturdays, Monday through Saturdays, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Bible Study, amen, on our conference call, amen, tune in with us, join in with us, you're more than welcome. We have different ones, you're not always hearing it from me, but we have different ones, we give them that opportunity, amen, to share a word, and we have some good discussions, amen, so God bless you. We're happy to have you with us tonight. Keep coming and watch God do Bhatiani. Mm. Thank you, Father. Watch God do some marvelous things. <laughs> watch God do some marvelous things. Amen. I love you. I've got to go. That's, what, that's my little warning cue. have got to go. So God bless you. All right. Have a good night. We love you. Thank you so very much for being with us. Lifeline, we love you. And thank God for your lifeline. Have a good night. Amen. That's going to do it for us. Amen. That's going to do it for us tonight. Good night, lifeline. If anybody on the lifeline wants to say something, you can. Feel free to say so. The line is open.